What's up everybody, my name is Dayton Silt and today I'm going to show you how to automate AgroCraft with Integrated Dynamics. We're going to be using AgroCraft version 2.12, version 6, it's the latest and probably the final version since the mod is no longer in development. And we're also going to be playing on the MC Eternal 1.3.3 B pack, uh, which means there's no weeds at all. Now the reason I'm going to use Integrated Dynamics is because it is an automation tool, it allows us to automate pretty much anything we want to. It has player interactors, it has block readers, it allows us to read some very cheaty information. For example, NBT data from blocks, and it will help us just automate the whole process. So I'm just going to go through a couple of the blocks and what we're going to need here. The first thing we're going to need is the Portable Logic Programmer. This is kind of the centre of Integrated Dynamics. This allows us to create, modify operators and variable cards, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. We're also going to need some variable cards. Uh, the player simulator is what we're going to use to automate right-clicking the rake and right-clicking the trowel. The rake will allow us to clear anything that we don't want, and the trowel will allow us to pick up seeds that we want to keep. The next is going to be the block reader. The block reader allows us, as I said, to read NBT data. We're also going to read to determine if there's a crop stick there, if there's not a crop stick, to place a crop stick, as well as what level our currencies are. Uh, we're going to need a couple of display panels. These are technically not needed, but it's a lot easier if you can see the data you're comparing against. Some logic cables, which just allows us to tie them all together and some variable stores, that's what we put the variable cards in. In order for a variable card to work, you need to have it in the variable store or in a display as well. We're gonna need an item interface, an oak chest, and we're also gonna need an inventory reader. I forgot that one. We're gonna need some crop sticks, an iron hand rake, and a gardening trap. Now I'm using an Actually Additions worm just to keep this area watered and you are going to want some kind of item that can pick up the drops that we're going to drop and discard them. So I'm using an Enderio vacuum chest, but you could use vacuum hopper, you can use anything that your mod pack has. So I'm just going to start by laying out the initial layout for the design of the 101010 seed automator. So I'm just going to want cables around the edge here. Then we're going to want our block readers at the back. We want our player interfaces on the side, or player simulators, sorry. No, not up there, there. And we're going to put our displays on the top here, just so that we know what data we're reading. And then around the back, I'm just going to, you can put this anywhere, but I'm just sticking it around the back. I want to put our chest down here. Another cable there, the item interface, under the display just so we can see when we're reading the trial data, and two variable stores. We almost forgot, we also need to put our inventory reader down as well, and just connect that up. And then for the crop sticks, we're going to place them like so. Now what's going to happen is we're going to put the seed in here and we're going to use the block reader to determine the value of the seed. And the way we determine the value is we get the strength, the gain and the growth and add them together to get a final value. Now we know that a value of 30 means that that's going to be a 10, 10, 10 seed. So I'm just going to show you a quick example of what I'm talking about here. So if I grab a grass seed here and I shove it in there, we're going to use the block reader to display its MBT data. So if you right click the block reader here and we've got different bits of information here, we've got has ball, dimension, the coordinates of the block, what block it is, and you can see here we have tile entity MBT. And if we take our variable card, we can put that in here and that will give us a variable card that contains anything this block reader is reading in front of it, which right now is going to be the seeds and the crop stick. So if we take that and put that into this display, you'll see we have some very useful information. We've got if the seed has been analysed, its strength, its gain, if it's currently a cross crop, which is not, that is, that's not, as well as what seed we've currently got in there, and the current growth as well down the bottom there. So what we can do using the programmer and more variable cards is we can actually 
we get the individual values of the strength, the gain, and the growth, and put those into one variable called our total variable. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one over here and compare the two. Now, whilst we're looking at the MBT data here, let's just go through a couple of different variable types. So on the left side here, you've got the name of each variable. So for example, agri-analyzed, agri-strength, agri-gain, they're all variables. On the right side, we have different types of data. Now, unfortunately, this, the screen doesn't represent the values very well, but analyzed is, is a, it's going to be a Boolean. It's going to be true or false. Have we analyzed it? Have we not? We've also got, for example, agri-strength. Now we know that strength, gain, and growth can go up to 10. So they are whole numbers. They would be integers. And we've got agri-seed here. And as you can see, it's got parentheses either side. And that generally means that it's a string. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the programmer. We're going to give the programmer an NBT value, which is going to be our NBT value uh, variable card. We're going to give it a string, which I'll show you how to create. And we're also then we're going to get a integer out in order to display, for example, the strength. So let's do that. So first of all, grab your variable card. Nice. And type in string once you open the program. And we're going to call this agri underscore strength, as that's the name of the parameter that we want to get the value for. And we've put that in there. And one thing we can also do, if you've got the labeler in your inventory, you'll get this little E here, and it lets you rename the variable card. And this is generally good practice because if you don't rename them, and you want to track where your variable is pulling its data from, you have to start tracking down variable IDs. And variable IDs are just a number and can be generally hard to track. So if you name them, it just makes everything much easier if you encounter a problem. So I'm just going to call this string strength and pull that out. Now that we've got that strength string, what we're going to do is we're going to use the NBT data and use the strength string to get the actual value. So let's do that. What we can do, if we put the variable card in the filter here, that filter is list, list down in order to show only the available operations for that card. So if we type integer, because we know we want to grab an integer value, it's going to ask us to put MBT and a string, and it'll output the integer. So in order to do that, we're going to put this variable card in here. Put the strength card in there, strength card, sorry. And that will give us the integer. And we're going to name this old seed strength. And we can actually test to make sure that we've done this right. And what we're going to do is if we put the strength card in here, it's going to show a red X. And the reason it's showing a red X is because the other two variable cards are not present on the network. So what we're going to do is go around to the back here. If we put the MBT data in there and the strength card in there. We can now see that the display has a one. And that's because the strength value of this seed in front of it is a one. And we're going to, as I say, grab the three values, the strength, the gain, and the growth, add them together to get our seed value total. So let's do that now. So let's grab our integers, our string, and our NBT data, and open up the programmer again. So we're going to create another string. And this string is going to be called agri underscore gain. Put a variable card in, call this string gain. I'm going to do another one for growth. Put a variable card in there, name it growth. Bring that out. And then we're going to once again get the, M, the integer value of that. So MBT integer, put MBT in there, put our gain in there, put another variable card, and call that old gain. And then remove our gain card, put our growth card in there, and let's put a variable card in, and call that old growth. So now you can see we have our old seed strength, our old gain, and our old growth. 
And what we can do is we can add these together in order to get the total seed value. So if we do addition here, you'll see a little plus, and it's going to take two values. It's going to take two numbers and output value. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do our old seed strength and our old gain. And we're going to call this old strength gain and put a card in there. And we're going to create another one and we're going to add old growth to old strength and gain and that will give us our total number. So we're just going to call this old strength gain grow. Put the card in there. Let's clear these two out. We're adding old strength and gain to the old strength growth. And actually, I'm going to call this total. So as you can see, we've created quite a few variable cards here, but we can put all of our cards into the variable store. I like to keep, like to keep them into in an order, just so that when I look at it, I know where the variables are. And the final one, what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of it so that we can just, it's, it's just good practice. So if you go to a crafting bench and put your card in there and put another card in there, you can see it creates a copy of that card. And when this value updates, the same card will update on the other side. And one of these is going to be unnamed. And I'm just going to put the unnamed one into the display panel here. And put that back into the variable store. So as you can see, this is now three. And that's because the seed that we have in here is brand new, which means its value is 111. That now gives us our total for the old seed value. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. But we're going to do it for the new seed value, as this is the seed that we're going to be breeding. And what we can do is we can actually reuse these strings. As you can see, I've taken them out, so that's gone to a red X because it can't find a variable. And I'm going to do the exact same as we did for the first one, for this one down here. So we go into the block reader. We want to grab the NBT. And what you can do is also name that card. Now you can also use the labeler and right click and I'll, you can put the card in there and I'm going to call this new seed NBT and just hit right and that's now called that new seed NBT. And we essentially need to follow the same process just to create the variable card. So if you open up the programmer and we've already got the three strings so we don't need to create them again we can reuse them but we do need to recreate the actual value data so we're just going to put that in there the integer and place the card in place the strength in and we're going to call this one new seed strength or just new strength to keep it short same for gain Same for growth. Move the card, add that one. So once again, we've got new strength, new gain, new growth. And we want to do an addition. Uh, you have to remove the filter. And we're going to add new strength and new gain. I'm going to call that new strength gain. And then we would create another card, remove these two variables, add new strength gain to new growth, grow total. And now we can actually demonstrate roughly how the system is going to work. So once again, we have to put these variable cards back into the system. And once again, with the total, I'm just going to duplicate that so that we can keep a copy of the variable, the variable, sorry. And the unnamed one is going to go into the display. So 
So now just to go through what we have in the variable store, just to make sure everybody's following, we've got the old NBT from the first block reader. We've got our three strings for strength, go, growth, and gain. We have our three values for strength, growth, and gain. We have an addition where we add strength and gain, and an addition where we add the strength, gain, and the growth total. And we have the same thing for the new seed on the opposite side, the three variables, for the addition and the total. So now let me demonstrate how this works. If I just break this one and put a cross crop here, and I grow them quickly, Hopefully this doesn't take too long. Yeah, there we go, finally. So as you can see, now we can see that the total seed value of this one is 4, whilst the old value is 3. And this is the basis for the system. We're going to compare if the new one is the same value to the old one, and if not, we're going to use the player simulators to rake the old stuff away, and the trowel to pick up the new seed and replant it. Let's go on to the comparison. To get our comparison, what we're going to do is go back here to our variable store and we're going to grab the old total and we're going to grab our new total and we're going to open up the programmer and we want a operator that's going to say is the new one better than the old one? And we do this by saying greater than. So say if the new value is greater than the old value, return a boolean of true. And we're going to call this variable is better than old. And we can once again test this. If we put our variables back into our variable store, we can just replace the display. I'd say, yes, it's true. This seed is currently better than this seed. Let's revert the change we made here and put the variable card back in. And we're going to put the is better than old card in the variable store for now. The next thing we need to do is we need to determine if the two slots here are empty. So that if they are, we can place a new seed in there. And the way we do that is if I grab the old MBT quickly and put that in the display. You can see here that there is an angry seed variable, but currently vanilla wheat plant. And um, we're going to create we're going to create a boolean that says if that's not empty we know that there's a seed so the first thing we have to do is we have to create an empty string variable so if you type in string and we're going to leave the parameter here blank and just put a variable card in there and call it empty string take that the next thing we're going to do is grab the old mbt I'm going to put the variable card back in there so it displays nothing at the moment. And the new seed MBT. And open up the programmer. What we need to do is we need to create the string variable, which we know is called agri seed. So if we do the string again and say agri underscore seed, put that into a variable card. So now we have what we need to get the actual value of it which is going to be an MBT string. So let's put our filter in there for now. MBT string. And with the old one, put the old MBT in, put agri seed in here, and create the variable. And we're going to call this old seed value, and take that out. We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to clear out the old MBT, put the new MBT in there, and we're going to call this new C value. And then the final thing we need to do is create a boolean to say that if, either, if the value is empty, then we know that there's no seed there. And the way we do that is we're going to use a not equals operator, which is exclamation mark equals is not equals. So we're going to say if the old C value does not equal an empty string, then we're going to say has seed is going to be true. And sorry, it's going to be old has seed. 
and we're going to do the same thing for the new seed value. If the new seed value is empty, we will do. So if it's not empty, it's got a seed. And if new is not empty, then it's got a seed. Once again, we can test that by if we put all of our variables back, our old, our new, we're going to put our old seed value up here, new seed value here, has seed, has seed, the actual string, which is agri seed, and the empty string. And we just take the old seed value and stick it in there. And we can tell right now that there is a seed in here. Put the variable back. So now we know if there's a seed in here. The next thing we need to do is we need to start teaching the system what items are. Now, you can't just say, okay, you can't, for example, go down here, click items and put the rake in there. That's not going to work. We have to create item cards. And the way we do that is once again, we open up the programmer and we're just going to type in item. And this is really, really simple. Just get the gardening trowel, put that in there, and we're just going to call this trowel. And create the item card. We're going to do the same for the rake. Name that rake. Create the item card. We're going to do the same thing for the crop sticks because the system needs to know what the crop sticks are. I'm going to call those crop sticks. And we're also going to create one for empty because we need to say to the system, okay, if we're not using the rake, don't use anything. I'm going to call this empty item. Once we've got those, we're going to put these into our variable store. Now, as you can see, this variable store is getting quite full. So what I like to do is I like to just split them out. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect performance too much. So I'm just going to stick these down the bottom here. Now, in order for these to work, the system needs to be able to see these items. And that's what the item interface is about. As long as we put these items in here, the rest of the network can use them. That includes the crop sticks as well. And just an example, I'm going to show you what each item does. Now, we already know what the crop sticks do. So let's take the trowel. And with the trowel, if you right click a seed, it picks that seed up. And as you can see, there's five MBT tags, and we're going to use them later to determine what the strength is in here to determine if it needs to be planted back or not. So I'm just going to place that back for now. And what the rake does is if you right click, it just removes everything. And as I said, I've got the vacuum chest here set up to avoid any items that are entering it because anything that the rake drops, we don't want, we don't want to keep it. It's going to be rubbish, it's going to be less than that value. So let's put that back. So what we want to do is use this inventory reader to get the information from the trowel. Because we're going to use the old value here to determine if we should break everything. But we're going to use the old value from the trowel to determine if we should plant a new crop as well. And the way we do that, it's pretty much the same as the block readers. We're going to say, okay, We've got the slot item, this is going to be slot ID 0, which is the first slot in the chest, which is the gardening trowel, and let's get that value. So now we have a variable card with that item, which is the trowel. And we're going to pretty much mimic what we did with the blocks, but first we have to get the, the MBT data. So if we put the filter in and type in MBT, and select MBT here. Put our inventory item in there, and we're going to call this trowel MBT. And we're also going to create the same strings as well. So let's grab those, our three string cards, and do exactly what we did before. 
we have the MBT here. We want the integer values. And we'll put the MBT in and the strength. And we're going to call this trail strength. Put the gain. We call this trial gain, and we have the growth, the trial growth, and we need to do our mathematics again. So we need to do our addition, remove the filter, and we're going to say trial strength plus gain. And we're going to call that trail strength gain and take that out. And then we're going to add the strength and the gain to the growth. Let's give us trail strength grow total. And just like before, we also need to create a comparison, but this time, instead of comparing, comparing the old block to the new block, we're going to compare the trial to the old block. So what we need to do is we need to go into this variable store and grab the old seed total and compare that to our trial total. So let's open up our programmer and do our more there. And we're going to say if our trial not that one, sorry. If our trial total is more than our old total, it is trial more than old. Now we're going to put all of our variable cards away. So that's the old one. The trial information I'm going to keep here. So the trial MBT, strength, the gain, total. Total gain and the overall total. Once again, the string cards can be in either one, it doesn't matter. And is it more than the old one? And I'm going to create a copy of the total for the trial again. Run over here. So I can put that on the display. So this one's the unnamed one. Run right over here. Put it on the display and I expect this should be zero. It is. There we go. Ooh, wrong one. Put that in here because that's for the trial. Right, so one of the last variables that we have to make is the boolean that tells us whether the cross crop is currently crossed or not. And the way we're going to do that is pretty much the same as the others. We're going to create a variable that's a boolean based on the MBT data. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the new crop MBT or new seed MBT, sorry open up our programmer and the first thing we need to do is create a string just like before and this string is going to be called agri underscore cross underscore crop and I'm just going to call this cross crop if I could type and then we're going to need to get the boolean from the MBT value. So once again, we put our MBT into the filter and we're going to do a bool. And what we're going to do, put the MBT in there, put the string in there, shove a variable card in there, and we're going to call this is cross crop. And we're going to pull that out. And you can test this one just like the others. If you open up the display, we'll just remove that variable for now. And is a cross crop, put that in there and replace our NTV and our string. We can see, yes, it is a cross crop. Now it's not, now it is. And that's pretty much all the variable cards that we're gonna need. And now we just need to put them all together. And to put them together, we're gonna to create something called a choice card. And a choice card is a bit like an if statement. It takes a Boolean. So if something is true or if something is false, then do this. And we're going to create a couple of different choice cards, combine them, and that will complete the system. So let's do that now. 
Okay, so let's go on to creating our first choice card. And what first choice card is going to do is two different things. The first thing it's going to do is check to see if it needs to place any cross crop. The second thing it needs to do is that if there's a seed there, we need to pick it up with the trowel. So in order to do that, what we need to do is we'll do the cross crop first. So we need our variable is cross crop. We need our item card for the crop sticks and we need an empty item card. Now we're going to open up our programmer and we're going to type in choice. And choice takes in a boolean, so if it is a cross crop, then do nothing. If it's not a cross crop, place a crop stick. I'm going to put a variable card in there and just say operator place crop. And take that out, and that's our first operator. The second operator is if we need to check if the seed is better, if it is, use the trowel, if it's not, use the rake. So once again, let's put these variable cards back. Let's get our trowel and our rake. Put our is cross crop back and take out is our new better than old. Open up the programmer and type in choice. If the old seed is better than the, sorry, if the new seed is better than the old seed, use the trout to pick it up. Otherwise, use the rake to get rid of it because we don't want that one. Put that in there. And we're going to call this operate pick up seed. And then the final thing we need to do is we need to check if there is a seed there. If there is, then we need to do the trial operation. And if there's not, then we need to do the cross crop operation. So let's do that now. So we can put our trial back and we can put our rate back. We can put this variable back as well. And the only variable we need is new has seed. We want to know if the new one has a seed in here. So once again, bring up the choice, put new has seed. You want to, if it does have a seed, then we want to pick up the seed. And if it doesn't, we want to place the crop, cross crops and create a variable from that. I'm just going to put this operator check seed. Now if we've done everything correctly, we should be able to put these operators back in here, put the has seed back in here, and this new one we've created, the check seed, place that in the click item. And we need to make sure a couple of these properties are changed. So if you click this plus, you can ignore everything up until we get to damage. We're going to set damage to false, and we're going to set NBT to false as well. What that will allow us will not place force. And what that means is that it won't check the MTB of the trial because that can sometimes bug out with the mod, but it should mean if we right click this, it will automatically place under the cross crop. And if we grow the seeds and that seed is more, it's automatically picked up. And now you can see that the trial value is now five. Now, what we have to do next is we have to make sure that if this is more than our old seed, we need to clear all of this away. And the two end ones are very simple. We just compare the value of the trowel to the old seed and use the rake if, it's, if the trowel is more than. This one's a little more complicated because we have to say if it's not, then use the rake. And if it is, use the trowel. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so let's get our raking operation out of the way. So what we need to do is we need to check, we need to grab our variable to say if the trowel is more than the old one. And then if it is more, we want to use the rake. And if it's not, we're going to use nothing. So let's create that choice card now. Good choice. If the trowel is more than old, use the rake. Otherwise use nothing. And we're just going to call this operate break. And what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to copy this card three times. 
because we have three different interfaces that need to break items. So if we put that into the crafting table and put an empty variable card in there and copy it once, twice, and we have the third original one. As you can see, one of these is named and the other two aren't. So I'm just going to use the labeler to make sure that they've all got the same name. This isn't mandatory, but it's just easier. So hit right and right. And this one's really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to drop one card into this click item, one card into this click item. And now you'll see if we put our variables back, so if the child is more, put our rate back, put our empty items back, you'll see it's automatically cleared these two. That's exactly what we wanted. Now the only, the final part of the operation is to clear this one and place the trial and then the machine is complete. So to do that we're going to have to create another choice card. And this choice card is going to say if the old plot has a seed then run the check to see whether the trial has a newer one and if it does we'll perform that operation. So let's do that now. Grab our trial again. Let's do this trial and we're going to say if old has seed, into our choice. So let's do that. Choice. If the old plot has a seed, operate the rake to check if the trial has more. If it doesn't have a seed, then we're going to use the trial. Write this into the operator, and we're going to call this operator use trial. Take that out, put that into the final interface. We're going to have to go back into here, make sure that once again, check MBT is set to false, and check damage is false. Once again, we're getting errors on this card because we haven't put the variables back, so let's do that now. Put the trial back in here. Put the operate rate into here. And old has seed back into there. And that should be all of our variables, and as you can see, it's automatically replanted what was in the trial. So now we should be able to go through a couple of growing cycles and see the machine fully working. So I'm just going to grow this quickly. Of course, it goes without saying, obviously I've got no growth accelerators, I've got no sprinklers or anything like that, so nothing here is accelerated, apart from the fact that I'm using the watering can. So now, if we continue growing these, you'll see that it throws away any that are equal, but anything that's more, it then plants, grows, and then once we get another mutation, you'll see it does another cycle. And it'll continue on like this until it gets to 30. Now there are improvements that could be made to this. We could automate the input of seeds. We could automate it so that when it reaches 30, it automatically stops the machine. But that's not for this video, that's for another video. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask in the comments down below. I have included a world download with this, uh, this exact setup as it is working here. All right, one thing I forgot to mention guys, if you want to reset the machine to use a different seed, all you need to do is just break what's there at the moment put new crop sticks down and say we want to do a tier 6 inferior seed you just stick that in there and grow it and if we just do one cycle of this you'll see it works no matter what you put in there and we get the second it detected the crop of four it's replaced everything that's it guys if you've got any questions put them down in the comments for now have fun bye for now